vice president. <laughs> we're both performers in tonight's show, One Stop Like Town, and we're so excited to show you what we've been working on for the past few months. This cast is, and our director have worked endlessly to make this perfect for everyone. We would like to pass our introduction off to our assistant principal, Mr. Morgan, to tell you the important things. We just wanted to come out and <laughs> we just wanted to come out and show our pretty, pretty faces. But here's Mr. Morgan. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Enjoy. Good evening, Hampton Days High School. Thank you for coming out to the HBHS Thespian Society production of One Stoplight Town. Before we begin, I'd like to point out our emergency exits in the back of the uh, building. Our district truly believes that every piece matters and that every second counts. There are so many people I would like to thank. Our gracious Board of Ed and Superintendent Lars Clemson for being great supporters of the arts. Our incredible teachers and staff, especially Technical Director Mike Lloyd, Stage Manager Teresa Lowenthal, Set Director Eric Ferraro, Producer Shannon Boyle, and Costume Designer Jennifer Spoden. Thank you to students Olivia Allen for the headshots and to Emery Thielen for creating the cover of the program. I'd also like to thank our Stage Manager, Tech Crew, Stage Crew, and our Sign Language Interpreter, Trisha Muller. Thank you to our custodial and office staff. Thank you to you, our amazing parents and families. I know you have sacrificed so much over the past few weeks. You've had missed dinners, late nights. I saw one student's uh, program in the back where they had their schedule. It said three to five, three to five, and then there was three to question mark. And I know that question mark is where we make this performance as amazing as, as it can be for you tonight. Thank you to our amazing student thespians, and of course, thank you to our director, Marie Perez. Your dedication to our student thespians is truly amazing. Now, on with our show. Slow down and 
taking all the great things this town has to offer. But I also know that there's a great big world out there and that it's okay to go explore it. I don't need to go exploring. Everything I need is right here. That's my bar. You know people are gonna hate that stoplight. They'll only want to take it down. Only time will tell, Barb. Speaking of time, I'd better be on my way. Polly's oven is on the fritz, and I'll have my head if I don't get it over there and fix it before the work is rushed. The whole town will have your head if they don't get their breakfast. Ain't that the truth. See you later, Barb. See you, Trish. Stupid stoplight. Oh. Take that. You didn't like that. Hmm? You're telling me to stop? I swear. Who are you talking to, Barb? You ain't talking about your stoplight, are you, Barb? Did you see that? It was just fuzzy around me because I kicked it. Looks fine to me. Looks fine to me, too. It was fuzzy around a minute ago, I swear! Sure thing, Barb. Whatever you say, Barb. Ugh, stupid stoplight! Oh. You saw a flash night, too, didn't you, Mildred? Sure did, Clarence. Sure did. Huh. That's a good one, Chuck. You better never saw that one coming. No way. He better hope Mr. Schmidt doesn't find out. Yeah, well, what about you, Bill? You and Lucy look pretty cozy. Well, does she know that? I mean, you guys know me. The ladies at Central High love Benson, Jim. Yep, even her. Look, she might have played it cool at the dance, but you guys know Sally's desperately in love with me. Is that so? Sally! I didn't see you there. I got that. How long have you been standing there? Long enough. Uh, guys, I'll talk to you later, okay? Hey, Sally, wait a minute, won't you? How can I resist? After all, I'm desperately in love with you. Isn't that right, Jim Matthews? I was just playing a joke with the guy, Sally. You know how it is. How oh, I don't, but I'd love to hear more. You like me? Um, well, uh, you see... That's what I thought. Won't you at least let me apologize? It's not necessary. Yes, it is. I don't want you to think that's the kind of guy I am. You don't want to know what kind of guy I think you are. What's that supposed to mean? You're the kind of guy who teases me because of the bows I wear in my hair. Are you serious right now? You're the kind of guy who calls me a breedy act and everything and that's a question. Okay, that happened one time. Or maybe two. Or maybe more than okay. two. You're the kind of guy who teases me because my diaries are way too good. You make the rest of us look bad. Did you really have to make a working oil rig complete with real estate pumps and moving trucks? I can't help if I'm detail oriented. Detail obsessed is more like it. Why can't you make a baking soda volcano like the rest of us? Hey, if you're content with the music name minus, who am I to stop you? So, if you want to know what kind of guys you are, now you know. Yeah, well, you aren't exactly green bean queen material yourself. What is that supposed to mean? You're the kind of girl who laughs at me for spilling milk on myself at lunch. You've always been a soft eater. And you're the kind of girl who makes jokes when my science experiment exploded in my face. That's right. You're missing an hour for the entire third quarter. And you're the kind of girl who makes fun of a guy for not getting the lead in the school play. It wasn't that you didn't get the lead. I wasn't feeling well on the day of auditions. So you said. I had a cold. I couldn't stop coughing and blowing my nose. Sure. That's the only reason the director didn't give me any lines. You were a gate. I'll have you know the gate was a pivotal role in our production of Our Town. Pivotal is right. That was a long time ago. It was last year. <laughs> yeah, and you've been picking on me ever since freshman year. So? I already established that you pick on me too. Sure I did. Back in second grade, you're the one that's holding the grudge and still picking on me. How dare you? I teach when we were eight years old. We were children. You act like a child now. You just can't help yourself, can you? And here we are, all these years later, standing under the stoplight, and you're still calling me names. You started it. I really liked your boast, you know. How? Yeah, well, I think it's kind of cute, your stoplight, you And I also really like how smart you are. I kind of like the young man when I got up. It made you look a little mysterious. And I also liked your diorama of the oil rig. And I hoped you would have asked him to come over after school so I could take a closer look at it. I thought you made a great date. And can we call a truce then? How do we do that? How about a dance?
So does this mean we can't use each other anymore? I didn't say that. Good, because seriously, you are a terrible dancer. Do you actually like feet or something? Oh, really? And I suppose a brainiac like you could show me a thing or two about dancing. Hmm, no way. Unless you're trying to break everyone in my toes, I think you're not going to get together like two times a week and get some dance lessons. You know what I think? What? I think you're definitely in love with me. Of course you do. Quite a day today, in Melbourne. 
Got that right, Clarence. Not the usual hustle and bustle on Main Street. I think I heard church bells ringing a little while ago. Must have been that Matthew's wedding. Matthew's wedding? Yeah, Jim and Sally, two kids, started dating a couple years ago, back in high school. Oh, right. I remember them. That wedding was today? Sure was. Whole town was invited. Well, I didn't get an invitation in the mail. That's because it was an e-vite. What's an e-vite? It's an invitation sent by your email. My email invited me to the Matthews wedding? You know, Jim and Sally sent the invitation through email. Well, why would they go and do a thing like that? I don't check my email. I don't even know if I have an email. Do you have email, No. Of course I do, Clarence. Everyone has email. Oh. We didn't see you at the wedding. Our invitations must have gotten lost in the mail. But we did all our invitations. Exactly. Well, when we get back from our honeymoon, we'll show you our pictures. See you next week. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. If it wasn't you, that would be one boring honeymoon. Who are you talking about? I'm no man. With who? I got lots of lady friends. Is that so? Yes, it is. Well, I'm gonna need to see some proof. I'll get you proof. Hey there, Casey. Oh, hey there, Clarence. Going to cross street time soon, Casey? I'm thinking about it. What's the hold up? Just waiting for the right time. When's the right time? When are we ready? Hey there, Casey. Oh, hey there, Trish. Where you at? I'm heading to Loretta's. I heard she's got some new lemon candies in stock that are really good that I want to try. Heard that right. Those lemon candies are delicious. Heard she got them all the way from England called Sherbert Lemons. I thought Sherbert was a kind of ice cream. Not in England, I guess. Do you know that in England they call a car's trunk a boot? That's funny. And they call a baby's pacifier a dummy. Oh, really? I don't know if they called it a melon. Hey! <laughs> Let's take the cross now, Casey. Are you coming? Not yet. There's nothing to be afraid of, Casey. There aren't even any cars coming. There's never any cars coming. I don't know why we got that silly stuff in the first place. I'm not afraid. What are you waiting for? I'm just waiting for my moment. Okay, that does make sense. It does? It does. Sooner or later, Casey's moment will arrive. And when it does, we will cross the street. That's right. We may not know when our moment will come, but when it does, we just have to be ready. I think I want to try again tomorrow. Same time, same place? Sounds like a plan. That's my cue to go. See you later, fellas. See you, Trish. Now, getting back to those lady friends of yours, Melvin. What about them, Clarence? When am I gonna see that proof? I'll email you. <laughs> How do you 
figured out, Barb. Yeah, Barb. What's the stoplight ever done to you? It's hard to get me. Oh, for Pete's sake. It is. Whenever I try and cross the street, it turns red. It's just bad time. Fine. But what about that time? It sit on yellow for 20 whole minutes. At the exact moment, a bunch of loud, gas-guzzling motorcycles drove right through town. The train of bikers was endless, and they were all going about five miles per hour, waiting for the lights to turn red. I was spending exhaust out of my store for hours. I told you, that was just a shorted circuit in the light. I fixed it as soon as I heard about it. Fair enough. But what about last week when I was being that delivery to police? I forgot about that one. I had a cart filled with produce for Polly. Every time I took a step to cross the street, the light changed from green to yellow to red to green again. There I was, running back and forth from the street to the curb, <coughs> like a deranged squirrel. My car was swimming off my cart in every direction. All right, now that's just funny. I looked like a dark fool. You said it, not me. Talk to kill me! You know what, guys? I don't think we need to protest anymore. So, you believe me? You're on my side of this? Not in the least. I don't understand. Well, I'm just not worried about the stoplight coming down anymore, since there's no way you're winning that election. How do you figure that? Half the town saw you running around the street last week, trying to make that delivery of policy. This town was a head councilman with a clear sense of direction, not so. What was it? Deranged squirrel? Who can't figure out if she's coming or going? Good luck, Barb. Looks like you need another issue to run your campaign on, Barb. But this is my platform. No, actually, it's your soapbox. So you're saying I'm standing on the soapbox because I'm passionate about getting rid of the stoplight? stoplight? No. <coughs> I'm saying you're standing on a soapbox because you're standing on a soapbox. Says it's mountain fresh. Fine. I'll get off from the box, but I'm not changing my platform. That's your right. And I'm gonna keep campaigning to get rid of that stoplight. I would expect nothing less. And I get elected head councilman, that stoplight is coming down. Only time will tell, Barb. Speaking of time, I better be on my way. Clarence got a new computer and needs setting up his email. I guess Melvin convinced him that if he opened up his spam folder, processed meats will explode out from his monitor. Clarence got a new computer? We'll keep you busy with that one for sure. Isn't that the truth? See you later, Barb. See you, Trish. Stoplight. Take that. Not again. Seeing movies and 
meeting new people. That sounds amazing. No one from this town has even heard of culture. Like, right at this moment, the cinema's playing a double feature of Groundhog Day and What About Paul? You got me there. Don't worry, it's the best. Yeah, slapstick comedy and gross out humor. Whatever happened to classics, like Breakfast at Tiffany's and Mean Girls? Mean Girls? Classic? You know what I mean. You're right. There is definitely a lot of culture in the city, but there is also a lot of noise and dirt and loneliness. But how can that be possible? There are way more people living in the city than here. True, but everyone's either coming or going. You could walk the streets all day and not come across a single person you know. No one takes a moment to slow down or even stand still. Maybe, I guess that's why I'm here now. Maybe I just need to stand here for a little while. But I don't want to stand still. Not here anyway. I'm just so sick of this town. The shops, this stoplight, the people. The people? I always thought one of the best things about living in this small town was how nice everyone was. But that's it, exactly. Everyone is nice, all the time. Too nice, if you ask me. Is there such a thing as too nice? Yes. Some days I feel like everyone around me is an alien described, disguised as human beings. <coughs> sure, they look like us, talk like us, and even move like us. But deep down inside their human skin lurk aliens just waiting to take over the world. Like the body snatchers. The what? You know, the old black and white sci fi movies? Wow, black and white movies. You are old. And here I thought you were so old, sure. So basically, Invasion of the Bad Snatchers is a movie about a town overrun by aliens, known as hot people. They would use their paws to transform from aliens to humans, and they would use their new human forms to assimilate into. Everyday life, unnoticed and looking exactly like everyone else. Yeah, that's it, exactly. That's exactly how I feel. Like everyone around me is a pod person, and I'm the only one who can see them for who they really are. Okay, he's definitely a pod person. I remember feeling the same way as you did about this town. So you get it. You understand why I have to leave. The thing about pod people is they are devoid of human emotion. That's the one thing they couldn't replicate. And if I remember correctly, this town has plenty of love to spare. You're starting to sound just like a pod person. Maybe you're one of them. Come back to town to assimilate into everyday life. Maybe I am. Even if our town were overrun with aliens, at least it would be something new. No matter where I look, everything is the same. <laughs> like there's Bart's grocery with the same old boring chicken and potatoes. Is it a requirement that everything she sells has to be an ingredient for a casserole? How about some ethnic foods from foreign lands, some exotic produce? Heck, I even take some medium spicy salsa for a change. Whoa, whoa, slow down, there, Ginger. Let's not get too wild. Then there's the pharmacy, where the most exciting thing to happen was a few years back, Loretta suddenly started stocking lemon candies from England. Well, you did say you wanted food from foreign lands. Then there's the cinema that refuses to show any movie from this century. You got me there. Bill Murray is a genius. But there are great movies not starring his comedic talents that you guys are missing out on. Then there's Polly's Diner. I have to stop you right there. Polly's? It's just fine the way it is. How would you know? You haven't been there in years. What? Polly's is an institution. The club sandwiches, the french fries, the chocolate fries. Damn. I've been dreaming of those chocolate malls for as long as I can remember. Yeah, those malls are pretty good. And you know, there's something nice about knowing what store is always going to have your favorite lemon candies in stock. 
guess. The weather always makes sure she has plenty since the whole town goes crazy for that. And sometimes for ingredients like chicken and potatoes might lead for inspiration. Some of the best ever dishes I've had in the city were made with simple chicken and potatoes. I have looked up some new recipes online. I guess I could try a few of them out. And if you haven't seen Groundhog Day, I just don't know if there's any more I can say to you. All right. All right. I'll go see Groundhog Day. And what are about? <laughs> One step at a time, buddy. So you're seeing that? Uh, I just don't know. I bet there will be a lot of people that will miss you if you want. Yeah, five people. Maybe. Maybe not. All I'm saying is, there are reasons to stay and there are reasons not to. Life is not as simple as that stuff. You won't have a light telling you when to stop and want to go. I don't have that now. If I let that stupid stoplight decide I'd be stuck here forever. All we know is what our reasons are. We just have to make sure we're making our decisions for the right ones. And I know there's so much life out there that you want to live, and you can still do that. But is it worth giving up everything you have here, now, and right now? That's the decision you, and only you can make. Kind of wait for a stroll, isn't it? Tell me about it, but it's the only thing that'll soothe them. My wife is getting a little, a little sleep while I take the baby for a walk around, around town. He finally fell asleep a few streets back. Well, you look exhausted. I know. I'm so tired I barely even know my own name. I think it's Jim. Well, nice to meet you, Jim. You do know you stop walking though, right? I'm afraid if I stop moving the carriage, then the baby's gonna wake up. You have to stop moving sometime. That remains to be seen. Is this light ever gonna turn green? Uh, the light's broke. It's been stuck on the bed all night. Eh, it doesn't matter. We got this stoplight some years back, but we still don't have much traffic on through town. I guess some things never change. I guess not. Have a good night. You too. So, what did you decide? I guess I'm going to bed. For now. What changed your mind? Well, if I'm going to leave this town, I want it to be because I have something I'm running toward, not something I'm running away from. I wish somebody had given me that advice before I left town. Do you think you would have stayed? Who knows? The important thing is that I'm here now, and right now, this is where I want to be. All right, well, I better get going before my mom and dad start to worry. Good luck assimilating with the pod people. You too. Good evening. Hello there. Uh, the light's broken. It's stuck on right. See that? I should have to fix it in no time. <coughs> Sounds good. Take care. Do I know you? You look familiar. I get that all the time. I guess that's what happens when you come from a small town. Maybe so. Well, good luck with the light. I'm sorry you have to be out working so late. That's all right. It's a beautiful night. The kind of night that makes you want to sit back and take everything all in. You know what I mean? Yep. I think I do. Good night. Good night.
we've got ourselves a green light to start the day. Good morning, Clarence. Melvin. Good morning, Trish. You two are up early. I didn't always borrow from Miss Sue outside the shop all day. So naturally, you've taken to getting here the moment she opened. You two are terrible. What are you up to on such a fine morning, Trish? Barb needs some work done. Her produce sprayers aren't working properly, and all they do is drip. Barb is what you Is that what you two do all day? You just sit out here and make comments about everyone in town? Basically. I'll let you do it. Say, hey, Trish, do us a favor. While you're chasing those produce sprayers, if the opportunity presents itself, you mind giving Barb a little surprise shower? Curse your regret friends that's playing from home? I'll see what I can do. You know Trish would never do something like that, right? I know, but a man can dream, can he? Where is everyone? I'm right here. Everyone else? What am I, shop lover? The rest of the parade? The crowds, the families, the marching band, they should have all been here by now. Wait a minute. Are you the Green Bean Queen? At your service. So you're here for the annual Harvest Festival Parade? I am, and I was told to meet right here under this stoplight. Yeah, that's nasty. No, it's not. It's today. Clarence is right. It's the 19th. But today's the 19th. So you're not. You've got to be kidding me. You're telling me I've gotten all dressed up for nothing? So. Well, this is great. So, where are we supposed to line up? If you're here for the parade, then you're out of luck. Pray attention. But you're here. Yes. Well, someone's going to pay for this. I'm the Green Bean Queen after all. I will not be humiliated like this. Then don't be. <laughs> of course I'm humiliated. And you should be too. Here we are in the middle of the street, me in this stupid crown, and you in that get up. I'm the drum major. That means nothing to me. You know, the drum major? Still nothing. How about this? <laughs> okay, I guess you're in the band, but you don't have an instrument. I don't need one. If you're the drum major, shouldn't you have drums or something? Nope. I'm the big cheese, the head honcho, the grand booba. I'm in charge of the entire band. Okay. I guess you could say I'm kind of like the king of the band. Kind of like her queen of the, um, green beans? I'm not the queen of green beans. What are you the of? Come on. Everyone knows about the Green Bean Queen. Sorry. I've been at bad practice. I'm the queen of the entire Harvest Festival. Oh! I get it. You do? Because I never understood why we needed a queen for our Harvest Festival parade. If she's the queen of a Harvest Festival, then she must have harvested the most green beans. I did not harvest any green beans. Yuck, you know what that dirt would do to my nails. Then what did you do to be crowned the green bean queen? I won a contest. What kind of contest? The usual, form and wear, talent, question and answer. What do you get to do as the green bean queen? I ride on the float in the Harvest Day Festival. And then what? What do you mean, then what? What do you do after the parade's over? I assume your reign as queen extends until next year's harvest festival? That's right. So, what will you do with your new title once the parade is over? I don't know. United of Queens before me did anything after the parade was over. You could be the first one that does. What would I do? I like to think that when you're given a leadership role, you use it to do a little good in the world. What are you going to do now that you're a drum major? As a marching band member, I've seen the kids lining up parade routes, enjoying the music, wishing they had an instrument of their own. So now, I'm working on a community service project that brings together kids with members of the band to learn how to play an instrument of their own. That's a really great idea. It's really easy to help others when there's something we're passionate about.
So, is there anything you really like to do? I love to read. What kind of books do you like? All kinds, mysteries, science fiction, historical dramas, romance. Me too. I like good romance novel, like Lance. What can I say, Melvin? I'm in love with love. <laughs> say, mine is getting bad. I don't get to read much anymore. You think mine might come over and read to me sometime? I'd love to. I know a bunch of senior citizens in the town who would love to have a young person read to them. Well, I bet I can get together some of the girls from the contest and together we can pair them with a senior citizen so they can read to them. That's a great idea. Looks like the Green Mean Queen knows what she's going to do the parade's over. The parade? I forgot all about it. It's no big deal. I'll just get dressed up again next weekend. Sounds like you're not feeling embarrassed anymore about trying to our day. Why should I be? I'm the Green Mean Queen after all, aren't I? And for once that title, I mean a little more than just wearing a crown and riding in a float. And harvesting green beans? It was never about harvesting green beans. I knew that. Well, if you're not doing anything, would you like to help me put together my senior reading initiative? Sure. Just leave the way. Alright, you the drum major. Shouldn't you leave the way? Let's go! Bow! <laughs> what kind of love story in your favorite, Clarence? That one was pretty good. What are you talking about? They're not love. Not yet, anyway. There's a whole new side of you I've never seen before, Clarence. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I'm like an onion, Melvin. Peel back my layers, you'll find surprises. You're not good. Never ask me to peel you again, Clarence. <laughs> Get those produce bars fixed, Trish? I sure did. And did you find a way to give Barb a little surprise, shall we? Now, Clarence, would I ever do something like that to poor old Barb? I had to ask. Well, let's go see if Miss Barb has those things about so much. Whoa! I'm not really good. <laughs> Can you two find somewhere else to sit and bother everyone? Oh, Barb, don't be such a wet blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Same time tomorrow, Clarence? Same place, Melvin. Like it. 
Not that bad. It's a stuff of nightmares, Jim. The face looks like a, a expensive orangutan. And the body, if you can call it that, looks like SpongeBob and Big Red out of Baby. The worst part has to be those wings. Are you sure there's no wings? What else could they do? Good point. I can't keep it, Jim. But she designed it herself. I know, and I was meaning to talk to you about it. I mean, you know, talk about fitting you together. She made it with her own two hands. Doesn't mean we can't get rid of it. Trash is tomorrow. Or maybe we should bury it. Very, very deep. In hollow ground. <laughs> we might want to burn some sage over it as well. Get rid of some of the negative juju. Now we're talking. But what could we say to her when she comes over? You know she's going to ask us if we display it. We tell her to be clean. They had bird seed coffee grounds. Can you clean something like that? Good point. I guess we could just tell her a little art that we're considering it's not going to be yeah, I wouldn't believe that one either. But when she comes over and sees it's not this way, we're going to break her heart. Then there's only one solution. And what's that? We just don't invite your mother to our house ever again. <laughs> nice try. I guess we could just display it when she comes over. I think that's a good compromise. But I want it out the second she's out of here. Fair enough. In the basement. No, the garage. No, the shed, actually. Are we going to some of that stuff you were talking about? Definitely. Well, this looks familiar. It's the side of our first date. That was not a date. Yes, it was. But we fought the whole time. We fought tonight, and this was supposed to be a date. I guess that's fair enough. Can we call Truce then? How do we do that? How about that? <laughs> so, does this mean we can't see each other anymore? I didn't say that. <laughs> you were seriously, Jim. You're a terrible dancer. Do you have to let me or something? Oh, really? And I suppose a brain actor like you could show me a thing or two about dancing. You know it. Unless you're trying to break everyone in my toes, I think you and I are going to need someone to be so you can choose some dance lessons. You know what I think? What? I think you're desperately in love with me. Of course you do. Isn't it great? You can't be serious. A new restaurant is good for the sound. You haven't had a new restaurant in how long has it been? 23 years. Wow, you came up with that number quick. How long have you been on the town council? Ah, uh, now it makes sense. I still can't believe I got outvoted. Again. I don't need another restaurant. We've got Polly's. Polly's is great. Everyone loves Polly's. But still love something we've always had and be willing to open up our hearts to something new. Flash just, Flash just wanted to open up our hearts. She wants us to open up our wallets. Well, I'm going to give Flash a try. Maybe for lunch today. If I can get a table, that is. It looks pretty busy over there. Maybe I better put my name in now, just to be sure. I don't know what I see over there. <coughs> Traitor. Fine by me. 
The bud is then spread with a scratch made aioli. That's mayonnaise, for goodness sake. I don't understand why you fancy you chef had to call it aioli. Fine, it's mayonnaise. That's better. Then I top the pie with artichoke hearts, heirloom tomatoes, crispy pancetta. Artichoke hearts? Crispy pancetta? Is that even a burger anymore? And to top it all off, the pièce de résistance. A farm-raised sunny side egg. <laughs> What's so funny? An egg on a burger? You got me pulling my legs. I'm not pulling anything. Eggs belong on a breakfast plate, not on a burger. I disagree. There's nothing like a warm, juicy, runny egg yolk dripping down the side of a burger to satisfy one's appetite. Yo, Mo, that does sound good. <laughs> you can't be serious. I imagine it's like a warm, buttery sauce for the burger. Exactly. Good man. He gets it. See, I get it. Don't look at me. I got a problem with burger right here. I don't understand why all these fancy new chefs have to change everything. The original burger was fine, just the way it was. Sometimes change is good. Well, I disagree. Hmm. How about we have a taste test? These two gentlemen seem to be connoisseurs of creative cuisine. They can try each of our burgers and let us know what they think. I got a Paul's burger right here. <laughs> hey, I was gonna eat that! Here's one of mine. Well then, prepare to be destroyed. These two are loyal customers for many years. I'm gonna choose your burger over mine. We'll see about that. Try Paulie's burger first. There goes nothing. Classic. Juicy and flavorful. Yum no on. That's what I thought. No try her. Burger? If you can even call it that. Buttery. Surprising and satisfying. Yum no on. That's what I thought. So, who's the this better? I honestly couldn't decide. They're both so different, but so good in their own ways. I like them both. Well, that's no help. May I? Sure. This burger tastes great, Polly. I can see why the whole town likes it. Let me try that. Hey, I was eating that. Not bad. Glad you like it. I didn't say I like it. Well, I would like to know what's in this aioli. You mean mayonnaise? However, it's delicious. Let's head to my kitchen. We can whip up a new batch. Can I finish this on the way? As long as I can finish mine. I wonder which restaurant has the best french fries. I don't know about you, but I'm saying that out <laughs> Besides, we're way too fast. They'll never be able to catch us. 
I'm faster than you. No, I'm faster than you. Yeah, we'll see about that. And cut. Hey, 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 everyone. What's going on here? I have one question for you. What's my motivation for doing this drag race? Is it the girl or the boy? Neither. Neither? I don't understand. Imagine this. You're a young kid with a lot to prove. No one understands the complexity of life just under the surface and they're about to bubble up. The only thing that will save you is the fear and excitement of the race. Understand? I do now. Thanks. Great. Let's get back in our places. Takes her up. And action. What are you racing for? Thanks. Thanks. Pink slips. The winner gets ownership of the loser's wheel. Hush terms. I hope you're hungry, because you're about to eat my dust. Wait, I thought that was my line. So did I. I had to make a few changes to the script for continuity. Just roll with it, keep going. And action. You'll be coughing up my dust for days. Stand up for the race, guys. And cut. Great job, everyone. Take time while they reset the shop. What's going on over here? Oh, hey, Church. Good to see you there. You guys making a movie? Yep, for a film class at the high school. There's something really familiar about your story. It's a drama presentation of the day from when we were kids. I wrote the script. I have to take a few liberties with the casting and the dialogue, but I think it's going to be a world. Well, I'd love to see it when you're all done. I'll make sure it gets to the, to the world from here. Thanks. Hey, Trish, you know the first drag race, right? I sure was. I feel like a little cameo in our film. It'd be awesome to have you in the sex scenes if you were actually there that day. I'd love to. What would you have me do? Just do what you do best. When he says this, just improvise him with your famous advice. All right, and you're sure I won't ruin your movie? If you do, I'll just send you on the final cut. Fair enough. Place, everyone. All right, Trish is going to join us for this next scene, so just improvise along with her and we'll see how this goes, all right? You got it. Welcome to the set, Trish. And action. What's going on here? About the drag race. Is that so? So, Trish, any last minute words of wisdom? Only this. Have fun. That's it? That's it. How can that be it? You have plenty of adults telling you things like slow down and be careful. And while those are all important things to know, sometimes, especially as we get older, we forget what it's like to just be a kid. Excited about the fill of race day, or the feel of the wind in our hair. So, if you're asking me for my advice, it'd be simply to have fun. I think we can do that. We already are. Sure looks like it to me. And cut. I can't say that that was a direction I was planning to go with the team, but I appreciate you going to step up, Trish. The pleasure was all mine. You really aren't going to drag race cars, are you? No way. That would be dangerous. I'd like to add the drag race digitally in editing. Then I'll leave you to it. I'll make sure to get you those tickets. Please do. And action. Looks like the deal's been struck. Two vehicles, guys. Looks like the challengers are ready. Start your engines, guys. Whenever you're ready. I'm just waiting to the light turn screen. And three, two, one. Here. Where else would we be? I could hope you'd get home for a change. Not till the business day is done. You should know better by now, Barb. Well, the day is done, fellas. Time to get out of here. You heard the woman, Nolan. You're dead, Clarence. See you later, Barb. See you tomorrow. Zero. 
he's finally done it. She stopped the stoplight. And you thought you had me there for a minute, didn't you? Stuff like all those times you played threat at me, or messing with me when I tried to cross the street. Not so funny now, are you, stoplight? You all right there, Barb? Could it be better? Could not be better. How come? Because I finally put a stop to that stupid stoplight. And all it took was one little kick. Is that so? Yep. I just swung it back like so, let loose, and it didn't stand a chance. You know that's destruction of public property, right? What's that now? You, you can't be serious. There is. It's a class four misdemeanor as set forth by our very own town council. You should know better than anyone, Barb, seeing as you're on the council and all. All right, well, that stoplight had to come. Looks like it's stoplight one, Barb zero. Once again. Looks like I'll be directing traffic until Trish comes to fix the light. What traffic? They put that stoplight up years ago thinking they get all this traffic from the interstate, but they never did. My thoughts exactly! Oh, it's all the same to you, I'll stand here just in case. Has the 730 bus out of town come through yet? Not yet. Oh, good. Do you have everything to her? All the furniture is already at the dorm room and everything else I need is right here. I'm ready for college, Mom. I can't believe the day is finally here. <laughs> Neither can I. It's all right, Sally. I'm just going to be just fine. She's only going away to college, and she can always come home on the weekends. You will, won't you? Come home on the weekends? Of course I will. Come oh, good. I'll have dirty laundry after all. I can't believe that you have to wash the smell of laundry. It's all right, Casey. You can cross. I will. Just give me a minute. I'm almost ready. I, I promise. Come cross when he's ready. That's, that's right. I'm almost ready. I promise. Has the 7.30 bus time come through yet? Not yet. Oh, good. You leaving town? Yes, I am. What are you leaving for? Running away? Small town life? I'm not running away from this town. I'm running towards something. I like that. That makes me feel better about leaving. <laughs> me too. That's about as good a reason to leave as any I've heard. Thanks, Clarence. How's everyone doing out here? What happened to the stoplight? Barb. Just a little destruction of public property. It's hard to get me! That's all right. Shouldn't be too hard to fix. I'll leave it to you then, Trish. You don't have to fix it. You can just take it down, you know? Nice try, Barb. We don't have any traffic ever come through town. We don't even need the stoplight. But we could, Barb. We could. When we have a symbol of hope for greater things to come, I think it's a good idea to hold off it, don't you? I think I'm ready now. Got yourself a green light. Time to go. I did it! That'll be the 730 bus. Time to go. Good luck in school. Good luck in the big city. Thanks. Good luck in the big city. All right, send out, Alma. So what? I can wish you well too. Can I, Clarence? Thank you both. Well, looks like the stoplight still stands, Barb. Sure does. I don't know what I like about the stoplight so much. No, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. I like the changing of the colors. Green to yellow to red. Sometimes we are expecting to change, like when the light is yellow, telling us to slow down. We know red is right around the corner. I hate that light. Like. But sometimes, if we're not paying close enough attention or get distracted, the change becomes so quick we almost miss it, turning green and telling us we have to go. These colors watch over our town. They know where we've been and where we're going. They know our stories. They keep us safe, telling us when to go and when to stop. Kind of like now. Like now? The day is done, Barb. It's time to go home. Green, yellow, red. Go, slow down, stop. 